Hello. So today we're going to be talking about the T500 reflux condensing column. And we're going to distill a wash that I have here. This is a still spirits turbo yeast. Um, this has already gone through a stripping run. So I've got around about 6.75 liters uh, in here. And I want to get this purified through a spirit run. I'm going to be using my Lubring boiler. Uh, I've adapted it admittedly and mixed up the power supplies. Now this is the same as a T500 boiler um, in the sense of the way we're going to be using it. So let's get it wired up. First thing, we'll be to get the power supply to it. These are very easy to use. Let that go. Now the next thing to do straight off is just to put the wash in. So let's get this in. Okay, next thing, you want your ceramic boil enhancers. Now the whole point of these So these little things we dropped inside and as it gets hot they will start stirring and moving around and it just stops uh, any uh, sediment even though it shouldn't have anything but basically being in there and it helps just to stir it if you have a nice hand this is about double lot uh, i think i bought an extra pack to go in here just because i wanted to now the other thing that you'll be potentially using if this is your first run you're doing with a spirit you'll need to add distilling conditioner uh, it's four cups uh, in here and you literally just undo the cap and pour it in because I've already done my first run which I did as a stripping run I've added this because now this is a spirit run there is no sugars in there so I do not need to use this but you will do say if it's your first run now after that this is about here uh, it's mostly uh, spirit, uh, ethanol spirit so what I'll need to do is add some water to bring it up so that way this won't run dry. What I'll do is get some water in there. I'm lucky. I have a tap that can adjust. Take the end off. So I built this little adapter, which can go on there. Now, one thing you'll see with my T500 reflux column is that rather than having the tubes that just plug onto it, I've put quick release valves on there. Uh, it just makes it easier for me to, be able to assemble it and get uh, um, pack it away and uh, store it. So. I have a plethora of cables here. So what we're going to do first, obviously, say, is just to fill it up. So let's connect this cable. I'm going to fill this to 20 litres. Don't really need any more than 20 litres. Could probably do it under. Okay, we now have our 20 litres. Take this off. So now that's there, what we're going to do is then wire it, the T500. Now make sure you've got your saddles in there. What I do is I just light there loosely and plug in the temperature sensor. Find a pen or a pencil so you can then switch it on. There we go. And what I'll then for next do, oh, I'm going to use this as my collection container. Because I've already put measurements on here showing the uh, every 500 mil. I'm going to rinse this out because obviously this had the uh, spirit in there when it's obviously a little bit dirty and I'll need this to be clean. Done. And my very long PTFE tube, which will go onto the 
output. This is the way around. There we go. And then that can just sit in here like that. Bring it over a little bit. There we go. So that literally is now just in the lid. So I'm going to have any worry about it dipping into the spirit, creating a vacuum. That's done. Now I know this is lined up. Check the lid and clamp it down. Now while I still need to run up the extra tubes, what I can do is actually start this heating. It's going to take uh, 40 minutes for it to be uh, to heat up before I need any water in there. So I'll just start it now. At least that way it's done. So I'm going to type in 105 degrees and go. So it's now starting to heat. Let's rig up the water. And what you could do is you can always just wire this directly into the tap. Uh, I have a family with young children, so we have the washing machine, dishwasher, people having showers, going to the toilet, and my water flow rate and pressure goes all over the place. As a result, I bought the Still Spirits uh, water reservoir. And again, I put quick release valves on there. So then that way it just makes it a little bit easier. So I get that installed. Which is T on there. And then we'll rig it up to the water supply. That's done. And then up to the water intake. And then the output water. Cut a little long tubes. I use this for other things as well. So what I'll do. There we go. That's better. Unfortunately, some of these tubes have a natural bend, so it's having to twist them around a little bit to get it. There we go. So it sits in there. And the other thing I have, I have an output tube. Now I won't need this for a while. This goes onto the tap. So when I'm ready to dump it all. That's already on here to open the tap and then to dump the whole of the contents of this boiler into the sink. And that's it. Last thing you need to do is turn on the water, charge this up. Now, unfortunately, I've got a bit of a leak on one of my tubes and I haven't had time to fix it yet. So this one leaks a tiny bit. Oh, and the soap machine's going off. There we go. That's now filling up nicely. What I'll want to do first, or well, next, sorry, is run a test of the pump just to confirm this is working. Get rid of any uh, air blocks. Let's give that a bit of a shake. So if we pump that on and hold this up, we can see, wait for it. There we go, the water's coming up through here. If we're coming up there in a second. There we go, and it's down, and it comes out. There we go, so there's our water flow. And that's working nicely. And I always check to make sure you've got no leaks anywhere, everything's on tight. That's it, so now I can turn off the water supply, and it's just a, a little DC plug and socket, which you can just pull in, pull out. I need to make it into a, a rocker switch or something, but I haven't quite done that yet. So that's it. So at the moment we're at 90 degrees C. It's 105 degrees C set. 
the output tube's ready, everything's ready. It literally is now sitting and waiting for, say, 40 minutes roughly, before we need to turn on this water supply to cool this. Um, we're supposed to keep this between 50 to 55 for a spirit run to keep it nice and clean. I usually try and do it between 45 and 50 because in theory that will give you a purer spirit, but it will also take a lot longer because obviously the colder this is, or the colder the column is, the coil is inside here, the more that will drop down rather than coming out through the tube. So, um, yeah, colder it is, slower it will be, but the purer it should be. So uh, we shall uh, wait for that. All right. Going to go and get some food and we'll be back in a while. We are now at 80 degrees Celsius and the output is rising. Now obviously this is examining the output of the water. Since there's no water flowing, it's not going to be uh, correct. Uh, in a sense, it will actually be higher, but it's going to start rising. And this is the uh, boiling point of ethanol. So we're going to start seeing things come out in a short while. So to plug in the water supply. So that's now going to kick in. There we go. And then we wait. Up and out. And they mustn't forget to turn on the water because that water flow, if you're running off a reservoir like me, will run out. So we'll top it up. And that will then automatically cut off in a moment. There we go, this. Now just tricking along. At 82, that's now cooled it down. And while it's getting colder now, it will slowly start to rise again. And that's when uh, it's important to just uh, maintain it. Now the one thing to note is, when you've never done this before, obviously I've got this needle valve here on top of the uh, reservoir. You will potentially have one that's sat on the edge of your tap, which you're twisting along here. Uh, if it's the first time of using, it's going to be all over the place. It'll either be too hot, too cold, uh, and it just won't be great. It's going to take you quite a bit of time to adjust it to get the fine tuning. Now, don't forget that when you, uh, say if you're running too hot, you add a little bit more water. Now what I've done, I put a sticker on there to remind me. Uh, but if you change it, it could take two or three seconds for it to change the temperature, but then obviously if you're giving it more water, that's going to instantly make something cold, but then that could cool the pipes more, therefore in 10 seconds time, it will actually get colder. So you could start playing a bounce effect of putting turning the tab on, off, on, off, and adjusting it constantly. So when you do make an adjustment, leave it for a short while, leave it for that 10, 12 seconds, see what happens, see if it's changing, don't keep playing with it. It's like mother always said. Uh, that's about it, really. 14.4. Uh, stable for the moment. I can hear the boiler sound is changing slightly. So I know that's the point when it's getting to different activity in there. 85 degrees C. So now it's just a waiting game. Here we go. It literally has been two minutes, as you can see now, that temperature is spiking big time. Now I'm hoping that when that gets to around about 50, that will slow down and stop. Because that's what the water is there for. At the moment it isn't. Oh, as you can see, there's some activity in the output. Yeah, there we go. It's slowing down now a bit. Oops. So we now have distillate coming out at a quite good rate. It's quite fast, actually. Now, the one thing I've forgotten 
Yeah, that, that's poking a little bit higher than I wanted to. It's not a problem. Right, so I'm going to turn this around so clockwise, less water. So we're going to do the opposite direction. And it literally is. And twist. That's all I need to do. So I want to bring that down. There we go, it stopped. And it's coming down. That is how little you need to adjust things. So I ideally wanted around about the 48 mark for myself. Yeah, it's going back up again. So I'm going to twist it around just a tiny bit more. Yeah, that's turned around. As you can see, it's coming down quite a bit from me just twisting it a small amount. Yeah, seems to have stabilized. Yep. So now I'm going to twist it to a minor amount more. Okay, just a touch more. No, it's going up again. So let's bring it down a little bit more. This is the problem is it can take a bit of tweaking. The good news is this first 200 mil we're going to be throwing away anyway. So I'm not worried about that. Now I just need to slow down. Right. Touch more. go I think we're pretty much there excellent one thing that I forgot to do in the beginning was to uh, not use the damage on but to put the output tube into my glass measuring jug because obviously the first what I want to do is take the first 200 mil that comes out discard it because that could have uh, methanol and other nasty things so uh, that's called your four shots. So at the moment we've got 100, well, almost 150. Uh, the current temperature is 44.2. It's a little bit on the cold side. Uh, it just means it's going to take a little bit longer. I'm not too worried about that. Yeah. Once that goes to 200 mil, I will then move that tube into the glass damage on. I'll dispose that 200 mil, and uh, everything else I'll be keeping. Right. Okay. We are. Now at 99 degrees Celsius, any moment now we're going to get to the boiling point of water. Therefore, I'm going to be getting water coming through here. Uh, I've only got three liters. I'm used to getting three and a half liters of output. But I think that could be because this is the first time I've actually run a, a stripping run using the uh, Alembic top. Normally, I take all of the uh, saddles, the bits inside here, then run a stripping run hot around about 55, 60 degrees. So it's, it's probably ethanol that I just didn't extract. I only got three liters, not a problem. It's still coming out nice, but I'm just very cautious at, uh, that that's going to be at 100 degrees. Uh, temperature's still good. So uh, yeah, I've got to shut it down. Now the way you shut it down, switch that off. 
that will then pretty much, well, that will stop the heater. The output, oh, there we go. There's the being sick with uh, probably water or something. Probably should have had a bigger container to hold that. Temperature up there is going to cool down quite quickly. You can't actually see that. The temperature now is at 24, 23 degrees. So obviously, that's coming down greatly because uh, it's no longer boiling. It's not got the fumes there. And that's it. That is now done. Now, what I'll be doing next, yeah, that's about right. What I'll be doing next is uh, cooling this down. If you just switch this heater off, okay, if you now just leave this as it is at 100 degrees or 98 degrees, it's going to take about two or three days for it to cool down. Uh, and we don't want that. So as a result, what we're gonna do is put in some cold water, probably about 10 liters. That will reduce it down to about 10 degrees. Uh, we can then dump some, about five, 10 liters, top it up with the water and let it gradually cool down. If you dump it instantly, the heating elements will get damaged because it's going from a very severe heat to cold temperature. Uh, and we don't want that. So I'll get the pipes ready and then we'll uh, cool it down. Okay, so for this, turn off the water supply. What I want to do is turn the heating, the cooling water back on because this reservoir is full. I don't want it to be full. I want to try and empty as much as possible. Plus it then gives a little bit of a, a pressure in here. And as soon as I release this valve, uh, all the water is going to spray out. So some water kicked out. I can now release this. Which then means Move that to one side. I can then release this pipe. But I'm going to need this pipe, so let's put it back on again. <clears throat> right, now what I want to do is just wait for that reservoir to empty. That's enough. Okay, unplug the power supply and that can be dumped there. Now the fun part is opening up, you can't really see. But I'm just uh, manually opening up the reservoir and just pouring all the water away. There we go. What I need to do next is to get the water out of here, which it looks like most of it has. I can open this one. Now it's just holding it up so the water flows back into the reservoir. Then if I open it straight off, it's just going to go everywhere. There you go, that's done. So that can be done. Then the output can be taken off. Be careful when touching things, because obviously it is still extremely hot. And that can be turned off. Now, one thing I'd recommend getting is some heat retardant gloves. These can be used in uh, ovens uh, or other areas. And I think it's rated up to 250 degrees or something like that. Main reason being is I want to open this up now, but I don't want to get burnt. So these help greatly with not getting burnt. As soon as I open it, steam is going to come out. Be careful of your face. Don't look inside it. You will get burnt. There we go. Let's move that back a tiny bit. And I'm going to put this straight from the tap into here and open it up a little bit. There we go. 
and look at the temperature at 95 degrees, 94, 93, so that's going down nicely. We're just below the 20 litre mark, so I'm going to low, raise this up to 25 litres of water. 86 degrees, so it's going down nicely. Again, solely doing this so we don't want to uh, put too much pressure on those heating elements. And we're at 25 litres, so shut that off. Temperature is now at 70 degrees, so let's open the tap, dump it out. Mm, a lovely aroma of uh, spirits. Oh, that's turned, so let's might as well take that off now. We're going to get some dripping out from the input water as well as the um, distillate output. What may be an idea is to get a bit of tissue. And that can just be mopped up. That doesn't smell too bad, so not really many tails from the smell wise at least. 66 degrees in there. So what I'm going to do now is turn off. Turn off this temperature sensor because there's no need for it anymore. Turn this to one side. Let all the water drip out. Give it a shake. There we go. This can only. What I tend to do is take the rubber o ring out. If that stays in there, uh, water could get trapped behind it. Let's turn that off. Water can get trapped behind it. It can start going off or it can smell bad. Uh, it just won't be very hygienic as well. Now, this uh, T500 column with a saddle also have been run twice. What I tend to do is run it uh, three, maybe four times, and then I'll take all the saddles out and I will rinse them underwater. Uh, or run some Coca-Cola through them to uh, clean them all off. Be careful, still very hot though. So obviously this just needs to be left somewhere to uh, cool off. And then what is also uh, recommend is once this is touch dry, open all the saddles out, uh, the steel and copper saddles onto a towel uh, and leave them lying to dry. Move them after a few hours, uh, say within 24 hours, they'll be bone dry. <clears throat> Excuse me, they can either be loaded back into here ready for next use, or what I do is I put them inside a silicon bag and they will stay there for however many weeks or months it is before I, <coughs> Excuse me, before I need to do it again. Uh, and then I just load it up. So entirely up to you. Just gonna put it down for the moment. All right, it's showing 65 degrees, so I'm going to stick some more water in. We're uh, about 17 litres of water. I'm going to go back up to 25 again. What I'll do is I'll repeat this, uh, filling it to 25 litres of cold water, then dumping down to just over, up to under 20, and then refill it up again and keep repeating until it gets to around about 35 degrees. Once at 35 degrees, I'll just dump the whole thing, then rinse out the boiler with cold water and uh, a rag, then dry it down with uh, paper towels. You don't really want to be storing this with uh, water or anything like that in there. And I've seen some people with their boilers where they've got bits of food sticking out and it's just brown inside, uh, absolutely disgusting, where it's just never been washed. Take pride in your boiler. Obviously, these aren't exactly cheap units and you want a bit of have it to last many years. Uh, you don't really want to have to buy a new one each year. And plus, if you don't clean it properly, 
apart from it breaking, all that gunk in there is just going to taint the flavour and uh, not really going to be very helpful at all. all. Right, we're at 49 degrees, so get some out. Okay, so this is now fully dumped, fully uh, wash out, so remembering to unplug it from the mains. Pull this in. Now you're going to get those saddles. Luckily, if you're using the standard ones that come with the T500 condensing or reflux column, they're so big they won't fall down your drain. So quite literally, let them all pour out. Yeah, all gum. What I'll then do is then pour in some water. You might get a little bit of uh, residue around the bottom. Spin it a bit. Now, this is the one good thing that the Love Brewing Boiler has over the T500 is these lovely handles. Uh, the fact that you can then hold it properly rather than having to put your hand inside here and under, it, it's it's just not as easy. So I've had my this boiler here for uh, a year. Actually, yeah, pretty much a year to date. It was December last year when I got it. Done. And then it's basically getting a towel and running it all around in the inside. Get as much as you can up. And also lifting these and giving it, say, a nice rub down and clean. Because the last thing you want to do is get this rusty. Every now and then I'll take off this uh, PU leather jacket and give it all a wipe down there. But I have mine on so tight that uh, not much can get underneath it. There we go. And then once that's done, what's always a good idea, grabbing some paper towel and just giving it a final polish. Same thing if there's a thing around the bottom, just give it a general wipe down. Yeah, that's empty. Done. And the same thing with the lid, just giving that a bit of a wipe down. What's also a good idea is to take the rubber seal out, the gasket. And that's quite a simple thing to do. Uh, you can use scissors, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend using scissors and I can't find my screwdrivers I normally use. So I'm going to, have to use a pair of scissors. These are very small, delicate ones. And try and do it without scratching or causing any tears. Get just underneath it and pop it up. Take it out. And then with the corner with your, just put your finger in and wipe all the insides. The reason why you want to do this is you will get some uh, liquid going in there and you don't want this to start getting all brown. I've seen some people's with tar, looks like all over it. There we go, make sure it's all nice and dry. Now, what I was talking about with the saddles, Get these powers out of the way. Because it literally is I grab a towel like this, grab some nice and cold now. Again, that's going to be wet. And then just pour them out. Some will get stuck in the tubes up the top. So just 
shake and knock. Oh, there we go. There's the blockage. Feels like there are none. There will be more. quickly inside obviously the hand is soaking wet which is fine don't pour water in here this isn't a perfect seal uh, don't worry it doesn't need to be but if you pour water in here to try and uh, like rinse it out all that's going to happen is going to pour around the bottom um, so you don't need to do that so let's put this down and then with these is literally trying not to get them everywhere just scatter them around Ideally, you only want them one high. It's not stacks on top of each other. It depends on, uh, admittedly, I'll put this on a mat, so, uh, or a cutting board, which is probably a silly idea. There we go. And just leave like them like that for a few hours. Most of the water will evaporate. You can then go along here and just literally move them across or uh, generally move them around and then it will all come off nice and dry and then once these are all dry so then stick them in a bag or storage and uh yeah keep that dry yeah that's all done store it away all good now obviously what i've also got as a result is a little over three liters of 92 91 thereabouts percent uh, ethanol. This will obviously need to be watered down to 40% um, or I do 45% and then I'll also stick this in my carbon activated carbon filter to uh, purify it, uh, filter it and make it even better. This will be covered in another video because obviously this one's only about the T500 uh, reflex column and how to use it. Um, so check that out. I'll be doing that soon. Hope you uh, enjoyed and learned something. Um, Thank you very much.